So hi everybody, welcome, welcome back. I hope you're all refreshed after that break. Uh, and now we are joined here on track one by Unicure, who are gonna share their research update with us. Uh, please remember to put any questions in chat and Q&A, and we'll have some time at the end of the session. Um, and I'll hand over to the, to the guys at Unicure now to introduce themselves. Perfect, thank you so much, Haley. Um, hi everyone, my name is Edgar Vega. Um, and I'm the Senior Manager of Patient Advocacy. Um, and today we're just going to be giving you some updates um, on our HD Gene Tricks 1 trial. Um, and also just to get you um, or give you an opportunity to learn a little bit more about Unicure um, and us as a company. Um, so like I had mentioned, I'm the Senior Manager of Patient Advocacy um, here at Unicure. And... There we go. Finally, it clicked. <laughs> so... Um, you know, if you're not familiar with Unicare, um, we are um, really a pioneer in AAV gene therapy. So um, we have over 20 years of experience in, um, you know, in, in AAV gene therapy. Um, and if you're familiar with our company, um, you know that we're, um, at, in essence, a Dutch company. Um, and so all of our research and development happens in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands. Um, and a lot of the development and manufacturing and some of the business operations happen um, in a city just outside of Boston called Lexington, Massachusetts. Um, and we, you know, over 20 years of experience, right? So um, it's something that we've been refining over time, um, you know, as gene therapy has become more of a possibility. And, and we're super excited um, to really, uh, you know, be working on um, a lot of gene therapies, but specifically for Huntington, Huntington's disease. So here's our, uh, our disclaimer as well. Um, you know, here at uh, Patient Advocacy, you know, we really want to um, understand the impact um, of the disease by engaging with the community, right? So um, as uh, time has progressed, um, you've seen, you know, myself or, um, you know, some of, our, some of our other colleagues, um, you know, working out with, with HD, uh, with the HD community and so we're super excited um, and really try to use that knowledge of, of you know talking with you and getting to know your experience um, to hopefully help shape internal programs right and um, and really uh, permeate what happens a lot throughout um, the company so you know if it's a scientist that's working on the lab or you know some sort of vector technology um, that we really want them to understand the impact that it can have um, you know on a family with HD or on a person with HD we also try to create opportunities for the patient voice to be heard, um, and that's directly via, you know, internal patient speakers um, and also patient advisory boards. And so, you know, a lot of these speaking engagements happen pre-COVID, um, uh, and so we've had an opportunity to do one or two, um, you know, whether it's been virtual, um, but, you know, obviously the impact is not the same, I think, um, as it is when it's done in person, so. Um, so you may know uh, Dan Leonard, who's uh, the Senior Director of Global Patient Advocacy. So he's, uh, you know, been the face of Unicare for the last five years for a patient advocacy team. Um, and I'm a little bit more of a new person. I've only been here two years. Um, but, you know, we're super excited to be working with you all. So if you do see us, you know, out and about, uh, please come and say hi um, and say, hey, we saw you on the webinar, you know, um, on HDO. So. And ultimately, you know, we all work towards uh, the goal, which is to deliver uh, one-time treatments, you know, that can hopefully transform patients' lives, right? That's, that's ultimately the goal. That's what drives us in, in the research and the manufacturing and all that. So um, that's our goal. And with that, I'm actually going to introduce Dr. Jill Lieberman, um, who's going to do the scientific portion of our talk. Um, and so thank you very much for the opportunity, and uh, we hope to see you soon. Uh, hi, thank you, Edgar, for that introduction. Um, as he said, my name is Joe Liberman, and I am an Associate Director of Medical Affair Affairs here at Unicure. I'm really excited to be able to share our work on the HD GeneTrix 1 clinical trial. For those diseases where there is a genetic link, gene therapy represents a very promising therapeutic approach. Gene therapy is defined as a technique that uses genetic material to treat or prevent diseases. First, we must figure out how to get the treatment to where it needs to go. Now, viruses already do exactly that. They find specific cells and inject their genetic material. So what our scientists have done is to modify a viral capsid so that it delivers our gene therapy, um, our therapeutic genetic material, instead of the usual viral DNA. 
The viral capsid can be compared to a box that might be delivered to your door. Then the scientists have packaged a therapeutic genetic material into an expression cassette, which is like an expression instruction manual or a recipe book. Once the patient receives the package, then the patient has the instruction so that the patient's own body can continually produce the therapeutic molecule encoded in the DNA expression cassette. In the case of brain diseases, if the gene therapy is delivered to the brain, then the brain itself can be the factory that produces the therapy to correct the genetic defect. So as this audience knows well, the cause of HD is a mutation in the Huntington gene. With increased CAG repeats, the mutant Huntington mRNA produces mutant protein. This leads to clumping of proteins and degeneration of neurons across the brain. This degeneration is particularly concentrated in certain areas of the brain, which in turn is associated with the symptoms of the disease. For HD, Unicure is developing an investigational gene therapy approach to reduce or knock down the amount of mutant Huntington protein. Unicure's gene therapy approach aims to reduce the amount of HTT mRNA, which is intended to reduce the amount of toxic HTT protein, aggregation, and neurodegeneration. The gene therapy is based on a box called AAV5. The instructions, which are for an artificial microRNA against HTT, also known as MIHTT. And this kind of overall gene therapy is given, has been given the company name of AMT130. Now, it's important to note that AMT130 is investigational and has not been proven to be safe or effective and is not approved by any regulatory authority. So the clinical trial Unicure is conducting in HD uses an investigational gene therapy known as AMT130. This investigational treatment is the first one-time administered gene therapy to enter clinical testing for the treatment of HD. AMT130 is administered only once by a neurosurgical procedure. There are two key components of AMT130. As I said before, that AAV5 vector and the gene encoding a microRNA. The vector acts as a delivery system and is based on a non-disease-causing adeno-associated virus that has been changed to carry and deliver a gene encoding microRNA that will recognize, bind, and non-selectively lower the human Huntington protein. MicroRNA are small pieces of genetic material that can prevent production of a given protein. In this case, to non-selectively lower human mutant Huntington means the production of both the disease-causing mutant Huntington, MHTT, and the normal Huntington protein, HTT, could be decreased. Next slide, thank you. So this trial uses um, a technique that's been used for almost a decade by neurotrogens experienced in delivering AAV vectors to the deep gray matter, including the head of the caudate and the putamen. This animation shows a brain with the left hemisphere removed to show the gr deep gray matter structures in tan and the CSF filled lateral ventricles in light blue. The neurosurgeons will fill the head of the caudate with AMT-130 and then infuse the putamen twice. This volume is immediately distributed to fill 70% of the deep gray matter structures. Then MIHTT is released in extracellular vesicles and transported to cortical areas and other gray matter structures involved in the neuropathology of Huntington's disease. So we are calling this first gene therapy study HD Gene Tricks one The objective of this phase one, two clinical trial are to assess the safety, tolerability, and efficacy of AMT-130 in patients with HD using a dose escalating, randomized, and double-blinded control design. The inclusion criteria include, but are not limited to, patients with a definitive clinical diagnosis of early manifest stage one HD, genotype of 40 CAG repeats or greater in the Huntington gene, between the ages of 25 to 65 years old. There are, many, there are several clinical sites open and recruiting in the United States. Please note, oh, let me go back one. Thank you. 
Please note that participants will need to be off any other experimental agents for 60 days prior to enrollment. Previous exposure to gene therapy, Huntington lowering strategies, or experimental brain surgery are prohibited. So I'd like to reiterate that AMT-130 is administered only once in this study. The study is testing two doses of AMT-130, the low dose and a high dose. The safety of the low dose will be assessed before testing the high dose. A total of 26 patients will be enrolled in cohorts one and two, 16 of whom will receive AMT-130, these will be called the treated group, and 10 who will, receive, who will not receive any study treatment. These are called the imitation group. Following completion of the treatment of the first 26 participants, we intend to enroll up to 18 additional participants in a cohort three, comprised of two groups where the goal will be to evaluate um, surgical, surgical techniques that simplify and shorten aspects of the administration of AMT-130. Patients assigned to the treated group will receive the dose of AMT-130 during a neurosurgical visit. AMT-130 will be infused into two specific brain regions, the caudate and the putamen, under general anesthesia. This is done by drilling two to six small holes in the skull and administering AMT-130 by a microcatheter. For patients assigned to the imitation group, similar scalp incisions will be made under general anesthesia, and the patient will remain in the operating suite as if the full administration procedure were being performed but no holes will be drilled into the surface of the skull and they will not receive a dose of AMT-130. The main part of the study lasts for 12 months with additional annual visits out to five years for continued safety follow-up. Procedures will include um, clinic visits, assessments of physical and neurological health, a neurosurgical procedure, lumbar punctures, brain scans, and samples from bodily fluids. The study is double-blinded, meaning neither the patient nor the investigator or clinical staff will know if the patient is in the treated group or the imitation group. Participants who are randomized into the imitation group may be eligible for treatment with AMT-130 in a crossover group after completing the month 12 blinded follow-up visit, provided that um, the independent safety monitoring board permits a crossover study based on the benefits and risks of the treatments as noted at that time, and two, that the patient still meets all study entry criteria, including volumetric MRIs. Since this is the first study of AMT-130 in humans, many questions remain unanswered. We're not sure how long the effects will last or what the long-term effects of AMT-130 are. We're also unsure of the impact of the immune system for direct administration to the brain. While AMT-130 has been shown to lower both normal and mutant Huntington protein in animals, this is the first study in humans being conducted. Also some AAV vectors have been approved for clinical use, but we are unsure of the long-term effects of the immune system um, on AAV vectors. Since AMT-130 is investigational and has not been FDA approved, there may be side effects or risks that are not known at this time. The variability of response in the patient is also something that's being investigated. Please feel free to contact a healthcare provider with questions about gene therapy in general or about our HD GeneTrix-1 study. So 2021 was an exciting year for AMT-130. In April 2021, Unicure announced completion of enrollment in the first cohort of the phase 1-2 clinical trial of uh, AMT-130 for the treatment of Huntington's disease. Enrollment of the second dose cohort in HD GeneTrix-1 is underway. We're also adding a third cohort to examine the possibility of administering AMT-130 in a different way um, to enhance the efficiency of the procedure. Unicure has also announced plans to initiate a second clinical study of AMT-130 in Europe in the first half of 2022. This is called HD GeneTrix-2. We are so grateful to all of our investigators, our collaborators, and especially all the patients and their family and friends. Everyone has poured their hearts and souls into this study so that we can all better understand the effect of AMT-130 on Huntington's disease. So here's the contact information for our sites in the United States in alphabetical order by state. The first six are at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, the University of California, San Francisco, University of Florida, uh, Rush University in Chicago, Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, and Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston. Our next five sites are the University of Michigan, 
Ohio State University, Vanderbilt University, as well as the University of Texas at Houston, Virginia Commonwealth University, and the University of Washington Medical Center. If you were someone um, that you know might be interested in participating in our study in the United States, please do reach out to our clinical trial sites. And for the most up-to-date information on trial sites, please visit hdtrialfinder.org, clinicaltrials.gov, or write to us directly at amt130 underscore clinical underscore trials at unicure.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Joe and Edgar, for sharing those slides with us. Um, so we do have a few questions. I know we've got <coughs> still some time left, about 10, 10 15 minutes. Um, so the first question was, um, are, you mentioned low and high doses. Are both doses designed as treatable or at a therapeutic level, or is that safety? If you could talk a bit more about that. Um, I think we're, the, the purpose is to assess this. So I don't think at this time the clinical trial is ongoing. So, you know, certainly these doses are picked based on the animal studies. Um, but how exactly that will translate into humans is something that we'll find out during the study. No, that's awesome. Thank you for that. Um, and then I had another question around, I know you mentioned about the number of patients in the US and Europe, and obviously it's still a small number because it's still quite early stages. Um, if you can, could you tell us a bit more about, maybe not the exact timelines, but um, you know how we see this going? Um, we've done some education recently with, with HDO community around you know going into the different phases of clinical trials. So maybe if you could just talk a bit like what's to come in the future if, if safety and et cetera is all going well. Um. Yeah, I mean, it, it. so after the last patient is enrolled in the cohort, it'll take about, it takes 12 months. I mean, that's the, the duration of the first part before we'll see anything. Um, and then the trial will continue for a full five years um, to assess the long-term impacts. But after those first 12 months is when patients will be considered for a crossover if they were in the imitation group. Um, so that will be the blinded portion will be the first 12 months. So I think that might give you some idea about how, about the timelines of this trial. Um, and as I said, the second cohort is enrollment is ongoing, and then we have a third cohort in the United States. And the European trial started um, in started this year. So um, I hope that gives you some sense of it. And I would point out the the European trial is not a blinded trial, so all patients in that trial will be receiving AMT one thirty. So that okay. is a, a difference between the two. That's good to know. That's really interesting. So in the European trial then, is there no one receiving placebo then? That's what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. And then it's also important to highlight, I think, um, you know, periodically the, the data safety monitoring board, you know, meets, right? And, and there'll be a couple of, of patients that enroll, you know, get treated. Um, they'll meet to assess safety, right? Because a phase one, you know, trial, phase two trial is, is to assess safety and, and dosing. Um, and then that also, um, you know, just make sure that the trial, you know, continues to advance, and um, um, and that's been happening, you know, um, very consistently over the 2021. So, um, you know, and our hope is that for 2022 that continues as well. So, no, yeah, thank you for that, Grant. Yeah, these are independent experts for people who are not familiar with clinical trial practice. Independent experts who are able to evaluate the unblinded data so they can see who received AMT 130 and who was in the imitation group and they can evaluate if there are any concerning safety signals. Um, so that way, as patients are dosed. So, for example, um, before we could move from the low dose cohort to the high dose cohort, they did have to, you know, sign off that that it would be um, in their estimation still believed to be safe to do so. So. No, that's great. Thank you very much for that. And just on that point, um, I know this isn't a specific question to Unicure, but I guess the HD community uh, maybe weren't as aware of what the independent data safety monitoring committees were before, obviously, recent news in the rest of the HD space. I know this session is specifically on Unicure, but I guess some people will have more awareness of what those groups are now. Could you just maybe tell us a bit more about does each clinical trial have this group and are they made up of like independent scientists or doctors or if you can maybe share some insight into that? I mean, I think you described it really well there, okay. a committee <laughs> of independent um, 
medical doctors who are um, experts in the field and they can evaluate, they are qualified to make these um, evaluations. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it has been interesting with the last two years of COVID as well. I feel like um, large amounts of the United States and, and the world have become more familiar with clinical trials and, and some of the lingo around it. So that's also been, been very interesting um, to watch. So yeah, with the HD community, as well, specifically with um, the number of trials ongoing, I think there's been a lot of learning. Uh, but these are this is a very important part of all clinical trials, and they, um, you know, they're really responsible for making sure that it's conducted safely. No, that's great. Thank you, Joe. Um, we do have another question around um, when when a phase three trial would be, but I guess as you mentioned, you know, we're five years out on this current trial, and then it's only if it's safe safe to do so. So, what would your thoughts be on that question? I can't give the exact timing. It's not necessarily going to take, you know, the full five years of this trial before we could proceed with a phase three. Um, you know, but I, at this time, I don't have any information on when the phase three would start. And of course, that depends on the data that we see in the phase one, two. Awesome. Um, so I did have another question. And guys, if you do have some more questions, please make sure you type them in the chat and Q&A to us. Um, maybe I misheard, but I'm, I'm, I know you said about, I think it was the US cohort where they're obviously receiving the treatment um, into the into the brain. And you mentioned around, was it for, for one population, they're not drilling drilling the holes or receiving the holes? Could you maybe, if you're able to talk, talk a bit more about that? Um, because I wonder if patients will maybe then, how do they know? Would they be able to tell if which cohort they were in, maybe? Well, um, so yeah, thank you for that. So the imitation group is the group that will not be receiving AMT-130. Um, so they would go to the neurosurgical site and they would receive the general anesthesia and incisions would be made, which would, um, but no holes will be drilled. Um, obviously the idea is that patients do not know whether they have been the outside, randomized yeah. to the imitation or to the treatment group. Um, nor do their physicians who will be doing the follow-up visits. They also do not know. Of course, the neurosurgeons, um, there's no avoiding them knowing, but they're not part of the, uh, you know, they're not the ones that the patient will be going to see for their follow-up visits. Um, so that's what's meant by double blind. Both the patient doesn't know and their physician is following up. And, you know, I don't know. I don't get to see the data either. So Edgar doesn't get to see the data. So it's not, um, you know, it's kind of blind to everybody. So that way, people's responses can't be impacted um, subconsciously. You know, there's obviously no intent there, but can't be impacted by knowing which they received. Um, yeah, and this is a very common um, practice in clinical trials. No, that's awesome. That's really helpful. Thank you. No, that's good to explain. So from the patient's point of view, they'll still have had the anesthesia and um, they will still obviously have some, some incisions that, you know, have been stitched up, sorted out afterwards, um, but they won't know. So that's really helpful. Thank you. Um, if anyone else does have any questions, just let us know in the chat. Um, just see if any more come through. Oh, yes, we do have another one. Are there any plans to have further trial sites in Europe at the moment? Um, I actually don't have the list in front of me of the trial sites in Europe, I'm afraid. Um, I know there are trial sites in Europe for the trial, uh, and I'm sorry for that. We'll have to uh, perhaps update this, this slide deck um, for these international um, conferences, so that way we can have that information available. But I do think, um, you know, you can email the email address I gave you to find out more about that. I would also say talk to your healthcare provider. That should be really your number one source of information, and they can also, you know, find out what would be the the best way to proceed if this is something you're interested in. So that would always, always, always talk to your healthcare provider, um, and they can get this information as well. No, that's awesome. Thank you so much for that. And that's okay. Yeah, we can um, always follow up with our community when, you know, share some extra information with them. Um, I don't think we have any more questions. I guess, um, Joe and Edgar, is there, is there anything else you'd like to add at all? Uh, just, you know, thank you so much for uh, giving us the opportunity to come and, and uh, you know, educate you all on kind of what we're working on. And uh, um, this is honestly probably one of the better parts of our job, you know, is, is to, to be here and, and, you know, get questions and, and um, you know, show you all what, what we're up to, um, you know, and, and hopefully um, at some point we get to, we get to do this in person. Um, that's, you know, that's our biggest thing. It's been a rough two years and, you know, that the roughness kind of continues, but, uh, um, you know, we, we 
definitely like being, you know, and feeling that heat, you know, and that warmth from, from the community. So, um, you know, hopefully we see you all soon. So. Yeah. No, thank you. Oh, go ahead, Jay. I was say thank you. I just wanted to echo what Edgar said. Thank you very much for the opportunity to, to be here and to speak today. No, of course. Thank you so much both. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for your uh, very great talk. I think it was uh, really um, engaging for us. Um, and you can catch uh, Unicure in their booth or exhibition hall if you have any more questions for them. Uh, people can pick up those questions throughout, throughout the um, weekend. Um, so we have uh, a couple of minutes um, until the next session. So we'll just have a short, quick break before we start the next session in case anyone you know, wants to join the next one, we won't start, start straight away. Um, and that will be um, with Dr. Bonnie hennig Trasman on track one, uh, which will be on mental health. And track two uh, is continuing with the behavioral panel. Um, so thank you again, Joanne Edgar, and we'll take a short three minute break before we start with the next session. Thank you. <laughs>